Hello everybody. So I made a new one wheel design. Um, the original design that I was able to find uh, for those of us that are you know, able to 3D print and, and kind of prototyping our one wheels um, was a design proposed to us by the gentleman named uh, D.L. Drito, I, I believe is his screen name. Sorry if I'm destroying that. Um, but I made the print and uh, the one thing that I've seen a lot of complaints about is uh, the, the amount of sanding that has to be done uh, in order to get the, uh, the motors to actually fit inside. Um, you know, I, I personally had to print it probably four times um, in different orientations in an effort to finally get a, a decent print and it's a, it's a rather large print so um, it eats up quite a bit of material, you know. Uh, still great design at the end of the day. Uh, it worked. It was a huge influence on this design, so thank you again. Um, but now let's get into why I decided to make a different design. Um, my big why comes from a machinability standpoint. So prior to becoming a mechanical engineer, I actually spent a bit of time as a uh, machinist and a welder, um, certified as a TIG and MIG welder um, in various materials, uh, uh, various positions. Um, and machinability is a big thing for me. Um, I, I, like I said, I love the design proposed uh, to us by DL Drito. The downfall to it though is that it is not easily machinable. Uh, if we were to take this to a uh, reductive manufacturing process instead of an additive, uh, meaning trying to go for a, a mill or a lathe, it would be extremely difficult to make that part out of metal. It would be extremely hard to produce on the machines that we use in industry to, to fabricate and produce metal parts. Um, with that being said, uh, machinability again is huge for me for the fact that if I wanted to go from a 3D printed prototype to a metal, solid, permanent uh, design, I, I would like to do so. And I feel that's the main reason that 3D printing really came around was an effort to uh, quickly prototype, but at the end of the day, we need to remember the uh, machinability aspect of certain things. With that said, that's really what influenced this new design. Um, with that said, I also kept in mind uh, a majority of you guys. I know that not a lot of you have access to machines like I have access to. Um, so I, I made this entire design with the intention of if you choose to use this as a permanent design in the 3D printed fashion, it will work. Um, I've proven it. I, the camera that's actually recording this right now is sitting on top of my one wheel uh, with the 3D printed hub still on it after a week of pretty good abuse. Uh, like I said, I tried to keep this with you guys in mind. I tried to keep it to where from a machining standpoint um, for the 3D printed design anyways, it can be done with common hand tools around the house that most of you should have if you're trying to build one of these things. Um, and should be pretty familiar with. The one thing that I think is an odd one that most of you, well, you know, some of you might have them. One thing I think is odd that you guys should go pick up or at least order um, along with the hardware that you're gonna have to order to do this and I'll, I'll show you if needed. I can even leave a, a hardware list uh, uh, along with this video in the description um, is a centering bit. These are not known by a lot of people, I guess, not or people that aren't really in uh, know like, about machining. That sounds kind of insulting, but sorry. Um, but it's it's a bit that isn't meant to drill all the way through. It's really just meant to mark your center, um, and it gives your your initial drill bit that you're going to punch all the way through um, the ability to basically stay on center for the first few moments while it's actually cutting. Um, so I strongly suggest getting one of these things. It will help in the process of this build. Um, that being said, I really think that was the only weird tool uh, that I had access to that most of you guys don't, um, or some of you guys don't, I should say. Um, but other than that, let's get into it. So you're obviously gonna have two motors. You're gonna need two motors. Um, if you're going with the, the 
the hoverboard redesign. And uh, so with these two motors, you're gonna need to take them all the way apart. This is what they look like once you pull the rotor and everything out of them. Um, the rotor feels like it's a pain in the butt to get out. It's really not that bad. You can do it by hand, uh, but if all else fails, just uh, clamp the, the output shaft, or I guess just the hub shaft, um, in a vise. Uh, and you can smack this with a rubber mallet a couple times, opposed smacking, right? Don't just keep smacking on one point, but opposed smacking and uh, it will eventually come off. You're gonna have to hold it and, and give it a pop, but it'll come off. Um, so then you'll end up with this case. Uh, the design that I have put forward is contains four pieces. Um, you're gonna have to print one of those pieces twice, and that is the drill guide. And it's this little thin guy. It takes, I think, 25 minutes to print. It's not that bad. Um, and the whole point is if you can see really closely, or I'm probably better on this side, there's little holes. Um, so these holes are actually going to be your uh, center indexing holes for your hardware that we're going to be putting in. Um, so what this does, and the whole point of this is it actually pops in there and centers itself. And I'm still working on that a little bit to get it a little closer in there. Um, but what I want you guys to do is actually just use one of these holes where once you feel you index it however you want, you notice I sand these, these uh, faces smooth or mill it flat if you have access to it. Um, so once you index this where you want it, you can take that, that start drill that I told you about. Um, I actually started with a center punch first and then the start drill. Um, but center punch or start drill, whatever you'd like to do, um, one of these holes. Pull the drill guide out and uh, drill that hole to quarter quarter inch. Um, put this guy back in there and drill, well first drill the uh, the hole that you indexed uh, to quarter inch on this drill guide as well. Put this back in there and put the fastener through quarter 20 piece of hardware. I mean, the standard, you guys should have it sitting around quarter 20 um, and put your your nut and bolt on there and clamp that down to keep this, this in place. Then index your other two and I would actually suggest drilling through this while it's still in place, um, at least your first drill bit that goes all the way through. Um, don't go quarter inch at one, uh, from, the, from, the, from the go. Uh, step your bits up, small to large, please. Uh, it'll make sure that the center of that hole stays relatively center. Um, so once, once you get that done, you'll have three holes that are separated by 120 degrees and they're spaced such that they will exactly align to the hub that I've created. Um, the hub is an inch and a quarter thick exactly for you to be able to go on to McMaster Car or your preferred hardware source. And you're going to need uh, standoffs. You're gonna need an inch and a quarter tall standoff with a half inch um, outer spread. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, so half inch outer spread and the hardware to the fasteners or the screws, whatever you'd like to call them, um, that you choose. I personally, chose stainless steel um, they are button head hex um, allen key and there's actually a step so mine are a little bit larger than quarter inch but uh, for most of you you can just use a basically a flat topped uh, quarter inch quarter 20 uh, is what i chose a uh, piece of hardware um, so once you accomplish that you'll actually be able to put the hardware in through the hub or through the um, motor housing uh, and basically bolt these together and so sorry this is going to annoy me ocd is kicking in so you'll be able to bolt these together um, and because that drill guide if you guys took your time you let the drill bit do the work don't push hard just let the drill bit do the work that's what they're there for uh, keep your bit lubricated um, and if you did that these will exactly line up and they will be exactly on center um, once you do that, you're going to bolt both sides, right? You'll have two motors. I don't have two taken apart at this moment. Um, but you'll have, uh, two motors bolted either side, uh, secure the hardware with Loctite, uh, blue or green Loctite. I, I use this blue stuff. It's not Loctite. Um, don't use red Loctite cause it will make sure these fasteners are permanent. Um, so just Loctite them in there, uh, to, to keep these things secure. Um, the next step 
that you guys will have to do, or the next print that you guys will have, is the outer rings. Um, there's two. There's one with air for your uh, your inflator to your inflator nozzle, and one without, obviously. Um, so the cool part about these is that with the motors taken apart like this, uh, these actually just slide onto this. Yes, there's a little bit of friction. I haven't been able to finish sanding these, but um, they'll basically slide over this and uh, they will come to rest exactly on uh, this inner surface. You'll notice that they're actually recessed cut all the way around as well. Sorry. You'll actually notice that they're recessed cut all the way around, both of them are. And that's because once they are fully on, and you'll probably have to seat these with a rubber mallet, um, but once they're, they're fully seated on here, you can actually bolt the, uh, you, so you put your hub back in, and then you can actually bolt this thing together. And with this thing fully fastened together, um, this outer portion of your motor actually becomes the retaining ring that is holding these hubs together uh, from expanding outward. Um, so you're loading against the motors still, uh, ensuring that the output from the motor, there's no slippage or anything, and there shouldn't be as well as long as you don't overstand these. Um, so you, you have uh, zero slippage, and uh, you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So the one you guys just saw is still obviously a prototype. Um, but I figured I'd get this, this design out to you guys and start getting your feedback on it. Um, so if I get enough interest in it and um, you guys uh, keep telling me that you want to see the uh, finished machined metal products, um, I can do that. And then if, again, there's enough interest in you guys actually wanting um, the metal version of this, I can, again, do that as well. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys like this little informative one. Uh, design will be released to you guys here soon. Um, gonna probably finish putting this one together, make sure that everything's centered first before I, I release this mayhem to the world. Um, other than that, like, subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you guys have success with your one wheel build and if you have any questions please feel free to drop me a line and uh, I hope I can answer them. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day or night.